何をやっちまうだろう噂通り大した腕やセルはこいつの前じゃ I had been under the impression that bringing a gun to a knife fight was strictly the Chicago way. But apparently it was the way of the samurai too. At least if the mix of gunslinging and sword swinging in Like a Dragon Ishin is any indication. This 2023 remake of a 2014 Yakuza series spin-off that was previously only available to Japanese audiences transposes the tried and tested street fighting formula from modern Tokyo onto the final days of Japan's Edo period. It suffers somewhat as far as sub-stories and side activities go, with both not quite up to the standard set by subsequent releases, but a card augmented combat system keeps the fighting fresh, and the crime story plot is packed with more delicious pulp than a nashi pear. Like a Dragon Ishin might not be on the cutting edge of the katana blade, but it rarely strays onto the dull side either. It appears you can take the Yakuza story out of the streets of modern Tokyo, but you can't take the modern gangsters out of the Yakuza story. The events of Like a Dragon Ishin may take place in 1860s Kyoto and feature characters loosely based on real historical figures, but most of the roles in its main cast are filled with a host of recognizable faces from other Yakuza games. Thus, its protagonist, Sakamoto Ryoma, a disgraced ronin out to avenge the murder of his mentor, is clearly just series stalwart Kazuma Kiryu, right down to his permanent scowl and unwavering sense of justice. I must admit that even as a longtime fan, it initially got a little confusing when Kazuma Kiryu playing Sakamoto Ryoma went undercover as Saito Hajime in order to infiltrate the Shinsengumi police force. Still, my fondness for him helped me buy into his plight almost immediately, and although Ishin's story beats are similar to those featured in several other Yakuza games, setting its figurative and literal backstabbing against the backdrop of a potential Japanese civil war made the stakes feel higher than those surrounding the typical turf battles. Unlike recent releases from developer Ryoga Gotoku that feature English voice casts, Ishin can only be played with the original Japanese audio. Yet even with the translated subtitles turned on, there are a great deal of period-specific references to regions, religions and regiments that I found to be almost impenetrable early on. Constantly pausing dialogue in Ishin's opening hours in order to consult the in-game glossary did upset the rhythm of the storytelling somewhat, but over the course of my 30-hour playtime I learned to distinguish a Goshi from a Joshi and ultimately came away feeling more enlightened about a crucial period in Japanese history that I previously knew very little about. I was less inspired by the environment itself, however. 19th century Kyoto's woodland surroundings certainly make for a nice change of scenery from the bustling urban jungle of present-day Tokyo, and much like Kamarucho, it's arguably best experienced at night. However, while Ishin's small slice of Japan's original capital city is not without its standout sections, there are still far too many bland back streets that make navigating your way around a bit less appealing. I found myself far more reliant on the trip skipping service in Ishin than I ever made use of the taxi services in other Yakuza adventures. As with any other Yakuza game, the rustic riverside streets aren't just meant for sightseeing, but also fight spreeing. And Like a Dragon Ishin introduces a blend of blades and bullets that makes its combat feel refreshingly distinct from other entries in the series. Ryoma has four different fighting stances that you can switch between on the fly, allowing you to go from the smash and bash of the barehanded brawler technique to the slash and dash of the swordsman style with a tap of the D-pad. They vary in usefulness though, and I found the pistol-only gunman style to be particularly inconsistent in its implementation. It either made life too easy by allowing me to slaughter hallways of sword-swinging enemies before they could get close enough to strike back, or its fickle auto-targeting would frustratingly force me to shoot at foes in the distance, rather than the warrior in front of me threatening to clean out my ears with a sharpened spear. I found the Wild Dancer style proved to be by far the most fun and reliable combat stance in Like a Dragon Ishin, and thus its skill tree is the one I invested in most heavily. Wild Dancer finds Ryoma at his most fleet-footed, composed of a combination of fast sword slashes and a spinning blast of gunfire that's excellent for crowd control, along with a twirling evade move that can be chained together to pinball him out of harm's way and into a position of power. 
The fact that its faster attacks come at the cost of it dealing slightly less damage overall made it less effective against the more brutish bosses, but at that point I'd just smoothly switch to the deliberate and powerful swordsman technique and indulge in a more steadily paced samurai showdown. While I may have relied on only two of the four fighting stances available to me for the vast majority of the adventure, they still provided enough variety to entertain. That's particularly when used in tandem with Ishin's unique trooper card system, which effectively allows for custom support loadouts for each of Ryoma's fighting styles. I enjoyed experimenting with different decks of cards, from the more passive troopers that provide boosts to your attack power and health, to far more outlandish assault cards like a chicken that lays egg-shaped proximity mines. There are hundreds of these trooper cards to uncover in Ishin, and they bring a welcome amount of depth and strategy to what initially seems like a fairly straightforward action game on the surface. And who wouldn't want their own personal attack bear? Ishin gives Ryoma plenty of opportunities to keep his sword sheathed, and one of the more substantial side activities sees him become the caretaker to a small farm in order to support a local orphan. It's a pretty involved process to go from harvesting crops yes. to meeting meal delivery requests by completing simple Cooking Mama-style minigames, but I'll be honest, farming simulation is really not for me. If I ever make a stop in Stardew Valley, it will be merely to ask for directions to the nearest highway so I can hightail it out of there. Still, this farm is an entirely optional undertaking and it certainly provides a more chilled out change of pace to take a sharp blade to radishes instead of ronins, if that's the sort of thing you're after. Maybe you like cucumbers as much as this lady. I guess in the 1800s they used actual cucumbers instead of eggplant emojis. Considering I enter each Yakuza adventure with a cocked... uh... fist, rather than a green thumb, I was far more invested in the 40 different dungeon crawling missions offered at the Shinsengumi Barracks. These provide an opportunity for farming of a decidedly more violent variety. Running blade first through bandit hideouts in order to scavenge precious materials required to forge more powerful weapons. The reused cave backdrop does start to feel somewhat samey, but the layouts, door switches, and trap and enemy placements are shuffled up consistently enough to make each gauntlet run feel distinct, and I found them highly satisfying to complete. <laughs> Elsewhere, a lot of the series' side activity staples are present and accounted for, with various types of gambling, karaoke, and dance minigames just a few of the distractions to indulge in. There are some fun, ye old Yakuza spins on modern minigames to be found too, but the bulk of these archaic amusements just can't compete with the more dazzling diversions to be found in the contemporary settings of other Yakuza and Judgment games. Trading Club Sega arcades and go-kart races for fishing and wood chopping feels a bit like foregoing a fun night on the town for a sleepy weekend away at your grandparents' place. It's not without its charms, but it doesn't exactly get your heart rate up. The sub-stories that can be stumbled upon are similarly lacking in any real surprises. In most Yakuza games, you can't make your way from A to B without taking an unexpected detour into WTF territory. But Ishin's sub-stories are mostly more conservative by comparison. Well, aside from the odd offbeat exception. Uh, can someone please get this guy a cucumber? That said, although helping an old lady to find her way home is pretty uneventful, it's still worth doing since Ishin's virtue system rewards you for almost every interaction you have. The virtue points you earn can be spent on everything from upgrading Ryoma's sprinting stamina to expanding the farm. So rarely does any task in Ishin go entirely unrewarded, no matter how innocuous it may seem. While its half-baked gunplay should probably have remained holstered, like a Dragon Ishin's stylish sword fighting and over-the-top trooper card attacks, successfully pair the Yakuza series' brand of hysterical action with the historical fiction of its 19th century Japan setting. Unfortunately, its step back in time also presents a slight step down in quality for its sub-stories and side activities, and the blander areas of its low-tech environment can't quite compete with the flashy charms of Kamarucho when it comes to exploration. Even so, its high-stakes story had me hooked throughout, and it was fascinating to get an insight into a period of Japanese history I knew very little about previously, albeit through a heavily fictionalized lens. 
No matter which way you slice it, Like a Dragon Ishin is an enjoyable and interesting spin-off from the Yakuza series, but not an essential one. For more IGN reviews, check out our verdicts on Hogwarts Legacy and Hi-Fi Rush, and for everything else, stick with IGN.